Hey everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for continuing to tune in. My name is Johanna and you can also find me on Instagram as Lake Effect Plant Lover. Today I'm gonna to be doing a video which I have said I was gonna be doing for a long, long time and that is how to set up your own greenhouse or grow tents. I have been using this setup for quite a while now and it has worked great for me. The reason I choose to do this setup is because I live in a 150 year old house and there's no way I could convert a room entirely other than the one I just built for my plants. We'll just ignore that. But there's no way I can create an entire room to be a grow room. The wood in this house is literally hundreds and hundreds of years old. A lot of it is old forest growth, which is amazing. And I really wanna be careful and not harm any of the infrastructure in my house. So I use these little grow tents because I can actually fit quite a bit in these. I was just using this one for the longest time and then I went ahead and got two more. So this one's already set up and then you're gonna watch me set up the other one. They can actually fit quite a lot. I was really, really, really surprised. And this one is still really, really full so I need to spread that out into the other grow tent. So that is something that we are going to do today. Another reason why I like these setups because it really allows me to control all sorts of aspects like heat, humidity and lighting in a small controlled environment, which is really difficult when you get in a larger space and also more expensive. I have been using this setup for quite a few months. I don't know really know how long, like a, a while. And even though I have two grow tents and I will soon have three, I have not noticed my electric bill go up much at all, really. And it's been working great. This greenhouse right here, complete with heat mats, lights and the whole setup is going to be under $130. It is super, super cheap considering like what you could spend on setting up some sort of growing system. And really it's exactly, if you buy everything that I tell you, it's going to be $126.37. That's it. You will make your money back in propagations in like a week. It's ridiculous because things grow so, so, so well in here. I find this setup really great for tropical and rare plants, especially if you do not have a terrarium. I have my Burl Marks Fantasy in here. I have my Philodendron Melochrysum in here. I have a Monstera Stanleyana. I have my Begonia Amphioxus. So overall, most of the stuff that's in these are rare or propagations. So let's go ahead and get started and I will show you how to set up your own personal greenhouse. All right, so let's go into exactly what you're going to need. I am going to post the links to everything that I have used to set up this greenhouse below. This one is a four tier, this one is a five tier. I'm super tall, so I really, really like the five tier. I don't necessarily use all the tiers, and so right now I have this one set up for my taller plants, and this one is for my propagations and my shorter plants, but I am definitely much more of a fan of the five tier ones. So that's what we're going to be doing. Please, please, please use the links below. You'd really, really help me out if you did. And um, yeah, let's go ahead and get into it. First thing you're gonna need is a seedling heat mat. I would not necessarily say that this is absolutely vital, and especially if you already live in a place that does not have winter. Unfortunately, I do not. We have like eight months of winter then you probably don't need this, but I notice my propagations speed up. I'm trying not to exaggerate, like more than double. I had some stuff that I was propagating and it took, I would say about two to three months to develop a decent amount of roots to be transplanted. With this, it's about a month and a half, if that. Some stuff roots in three weeks. The one that I like to use and the one that I recommend using is the Vivo Sun. There is a 10 inch by 20 inch. This is a 20 by 20 because it fits perfectly on the wire racks that are here. And this one, I used two 10 by 20s on two different shelves, if I remember correctly. And this just cuts back how many things you have to plug in. So I highly recommend getting the 10 by 20 Vivo Sun. Oops. So I got two of these and I'm probably going to set up my other one similar to this where, actually, I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I think what I'm gonna do actually is put it on the bottom. I always recommend putting it on the bottom and not necessarily putting it on the top because heat rises. So it's always gonna be hotter and more humid up here than it is down there. So you definitely want one on the bottom and then you want the other one, probably one of the middle racks. So you could do more than that, but honestly, um, these I only use for propagating. And these also work really, really well in raising the ambient temperature in your grow tents. If you just had these sitting out on a shelf somewhere where you were growing things, it would only raise about the heat 
in the first, I would say, 10 inches of space, but since this is completely enclosed, it raises the heat in the whole thing. So that is why I am pro heat mat. Big game changer, especially if you are propagating. The other thing that you are going to need in order to set up your grow tents are grow lights. As you can see in this one, I have pink grow lights, pink grow lights, and this one I have like normal colored grow lights. I am actually going to be switching over the lights in this one to normal colored. I would say that I find they all grow the same no matter what lights that you have. At least I have noticed that it's just the same thing. Like it doesn't help it grow any more or less. The only reason I am switching out the pink lights is first of all, they're obnoxious, okay? I'm sure like there's buildings over there and they look into this room and they probably think I'm running a red light district or something and they're like, why is that room glowing pink all the time? And secondly, I am changing them over because I really like being able to just stand here, look into my grow tent and be able to see what the plant looks like. And the problem with the pink lights is that they distort the color and it's kind of difficult to see all aspects of the plant under the pink grow lights. And you can't really tell if a leaf is yellowing, you can't tell if there's bugs on it really. So I am going to be switching that over to these lights, and that is what I'm gonna to recommend to you today. Farina Grow LED lights. Again, since it's LED, they use like hardly any power. You will not see your electricity go up at all. Those are the only things you're gonna put in, is the heat mat, which is just a trickle, and LEDs. I have noticed everything grows awesome. Absolutely awesome. I, um, there's a Begonia Breviosa, Breviosa, Brevi, bra, 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 Brevi. I call it the Brevi, because I think it's cute. I have everything growing spectacularly. Yeah, so there's four grow lights in this. In this setup, I currently have two up here and two down in the lower one. I am gonna set up the middle area at some point, but I'm in no rush. I have the two up here and the two down there, and right now that's working great. And once I get the other one set up, we're all good. It's really a good idea not to overcrowd your grow tent because if you overcrowd it, you're gonna get more likelihood of pests, you're gonna get more likelihood of fungus, you're gonna get more likelihood of fungus gnats. The more spread out you have some things with, the more that it's gonna be able to breathe and the less likelihood that pests are gonna travel quickly through what you have. So that's another reason why I'm setting up a third one even though I have more than enough room. In both of these, I just need to spread some things out of it. And last but not least, you need your greenhouse. This is the box that it comes in. It's super, super tiny. It's a little heavy, surprisingly, because I didn't think, I don't remember it being this heavy when I dragged it up here, but apparently it is. So let's go ahead and get started and put these things together. Oh, I forgot the last thing that you need. Hold on. And truly not the last thing, because I shouldn't say the last thing of whatever, but the last, there I go again. Another thing you're gonna need that I have found absolutely wonderful to use in these tents are these propagation trays. I really like using these. As you can see, there's these ridges on here and they're fairly deep ridges. These are probably, I wanna say, about a quarter of an inch, maybe a little bit more. And the reason why these are awesome, first of all, you can put them in your grow tent, you can water in place, you don't have to worry about water dripping everywhere and it just makes life so much easier. These are have wire mesh, which are about an inch and a half big, so things could fall through it. By having your plants on the trays, they're not falling through anything. And especially, this is the key, okay? This is why you want the ones with the ridges. Since there's ridges here, you fill these up with water. And especially the ones that are on the heat mat, it helps raises the humidity. So as you can see, these are really, really humid in here. You can see that there's water droplets forming. Some of it is going down and that there's, I don't spray in here, I don't miss, there's no humidifier in here. This is just using science, essentially. And since there's ridges, your plants aren't sitting in water. So you never want to have too much water in here that your plants are sitting in it, because that's bad, you'll rot, and you'll be very, very sad. Other things that I have outfitted this one with, but not this one, is that there's a little tiny fan in the corner of this one. I honestly haven't used it because the humidity has not really been that high, but if I need to, Probably in the summer, I'll be able to turn the air in there and get a little bit of airflow. Another thing which this one has, which I haven't gotten for this one yet, because I can't figure out which one I'm getting, but I will include the link of the one that I use in here, is a little reptile hygrometer and thermometer. Hygrometer tells you what the humidity is, and the thermometer obviously tells you what the temperature is. And I can just peek in there and I can see what the humidity and the temperature is, because you know, like it's amazing how much it changes, even on the levels, and that's why I have two. I haven't set anything up in this one yet. 
I think I'm probably gonna get a wireless one so I can stick it in here and I'll be able to tell what the temperature is from anywhere in the world. And I will do use those in my bathroom and I'm in my plant room and I'll put the link of that one below as well. They are awesome. It gives me a huge peace of mind when I can't be home but I can still see what the temperature and the humidity like is in my plant rooms. All right, all right, now we are actually gonna get started and put this thing together. Okay, as you can see, it is all set up. You do not want to put everything on there right away. It's going to be way much easier to hang your lights on without this on there and without the wire trays. I discovered that the hard way doing the first one. So as you can see, I set this up also a little bit differently than I set it up the other five tier. I put four in this one, even though it's a five tier. And the reason is I like having this top shelf really wide and open for tall things. In my other one, I have my Burl Marks Fantasy, which is growing like an absolute weed. Anything that is probably gonna get really tall will be able to handle the space. I doubt, I hope, I don't know. If it's like amazing, then it will get taller than this and I don't know what I'm gonna do. But but that way I like coming in the morning, seeing all my stuff growing, seeing how good it looks in the morning. And then the lower shelves, this is about 13 and a half, 14 inches of space between here, which is great for propagating and for a lot of shorter things and smaller things. So that's what I'm probably gonna do with these bottom shelves. So let's go ahead and put the lights in. Okay, one of the reasons why I love this light setup is because you only are using, where's my finger? There's my finger. You're only using one plug to plug into the one, the one thing, the power strip or whatever you're using. And so this one is plugged into there and that end is plugged into here. And now that goes all the way down into this end and that is using a connector which plugs into that light and then on that end is the connector which plugs into the back light over there there's a connector that plugs in the black light into the front light and it greatly reduces the number of outlets that you're using and here is the heat mat that is all set up my outlets are over here on this side so one thing which may seem obvious to some and it did not seem obvious to me is to make sure that your cord is going to the side where you're gonna be plugging in. So I have a heat mat on that level and on the lowest level. And here it is, really, really all finished. This is why I love it because you can put two trays in here on each level. So you do get a lot of bang for your room completely. And I'm not gonna, set this up all the way now because I do like having a little barrier between the historic floor and the grow tents. As you can see, I have a little bit of a outdoor carpet under there. And I use carpet, by the way, because it sort of insulates it a little bit more instead of using sort of like a rubber. But I'm gonna hold off until I get something to put under this grow tent before I fill it up. But there it is, looking awesome. I cannot wait to fill it up with plants. All right, so now really, really quickly, I'm gonna go over the two very minor issues that I've had with these grow tents. The first issue is honestly not really an issue. And especially if you tend to water regularly, I am not, I'm an underwaterer. So I get really busy sometimes. I work in tech, I do a bunch of other projects and honestly, like I forget to water. And so the one issue is that I forget to water and because these are on heat mats, they tend to evaporate and dry out quicker than they would if they weren't. That is just something that I have to be vigilant about and make sure that everything stays water and stays hydrated. Generally, 
It's not really a huge issue because if I come in here and I notice that there's not any condensation on the tent, that means I probably need to put water in the trays and often that means I need to water certain things that like to stay wetter. So not really a huge issue. The other thing I would say is a little bit of an issue, but again, there's a really, really easy fix to it. And that is the longer that it stays humid, you do have a likelihood of a little bit of mold building up. And I've had some mold build up on the pink one over here a little bit in the top of the grow tent up here and super, super easy fix. All you do is you take copper fungicide and this works if you have any sort of mold or fungus on anything, leaves, foliage, roots, wherever, and inside your grow tent. So what I just do is I take this spray and I just spray it all in there and just cover it and then it kills the mold in, like immediately. So it's really not a huge deal. Just make sure you keep up with it. And honestly, I've only found it in there maybe once um, and that's it. And that's over an extended period of time. So make sure you have this on hand. It works great indoor and out of the garden, powdery mildew, any of that stuff. I love this stuff. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you have any questions about this whole grow tent pink house and what would do well and what wouldn't, and if there's any suggestions, if you think that what I can use could be better, please let me know. I am more than happy to help you. Please contact me either here on YouTube or on my Instagram, which is also Lake Effect Plant Lover. I am a huge propagation geek. I'm a plant geek. I really, really, really love plants and I love growing them and figuring out how I can make them grow better. And so far, this has worked great for me. So just really quickly, let's enjoy some beautiful little glamour shots of the gorgeous plants that are growing in here. And then after that, I'm gonna tell you about a really exciting video that's being released on Friday. All right, so if you were on my Instagram, then you would have heard me mention that last Friday, I was going to release a very special video in which you would receive 15% off someone who has absolutely amazing plants. That person I am going to reveal in the Friday video, which was actually gonna come out this Friday, for sure, I already confirmed it with her. The reason we couldn't release it last Friday is because this girl just built a whole entire new greenhouse, which she is filling up with plants, which you are gonna be able to buy. And not only are you gonna be able to buy them, they're also gonna be 15% off and you can only get the code right here on this YouTube channel and maybe, and well, no, not maybe, and on my Instagram, but first, it's gonna appear here. So make sure you subscribe and find out this person has the absolute most gorgeous plants that I have probably ever received, maybe ever. And I can't wait to reveal them to you. You're gonna get an early plant haul video because it's also going to be covering the plants that I got from her last, last week, right? I have no concept of time. I'm so bad at time. So thank you for tuning in. Can't wait to see you Friday and be excited for sure. Have a great day.